Retransmission, Segment 3, Acquiring Contemporaneity. It has been 95 days since the Great Catastrophe. The Messenger speaks. You must be wondering why I have reached out to you. It was written, you see, that you would come to this particular chamber at this very moment in time. The walls told us of your coming when we once were. Look at them. Are they not fascinating? One of your... Walk with you. These walls tell of a tragic story. A story we transcribed on our structures, on our artifacts. A story we cannot alter. A mystery defying us in plain sight. We tried. Our scholars and scientists, poets and physicists, bright minds, rebellious hearts. They all tried so hard to bring about change. They, we all failed. None could change what we discovered, the stories written into the walls of these rooms. By whom, we never knew. We know they tell of the future that is, the future that was, and the future that is yet to come. Heroes. We failed at modifying the line. We failed at adding a single dot. It was clear. We were to be messengers at best. But messengers to whom? To you. We removed our ability to read those stories from your original template. A doorway that is also a puzzle. We must find a solution. Those were Brutus's words when he visited the vault under the Colosseum more than 2,000 years ago. He drew the vault, sketched it to the best of his abilities, but he could not see. Just as you are blind, you may read your watch, you may read hourglasses and calendars, but you cannot grasp beyond that simplistic surface. For now, the true reading of time still escapes you. And so today, the curtains pulled and the yours is shown, tragic and complete. Those walls you might never read. Events yet unfold as written. But something, anything must change. You do not understand what is at stake. The reader has no power. He is but an observer. But the author? The author invents the future. The author owns the future. A future where zeros are avoided. A future where a loved one can be revived by the drafting of a new chapter. A future where humankind is more than it is today. A future where, just perhaps, we can all still exist together. Does it make you real? 
What if reality wasn't what you thought it was? What if this was all a construction? A masterfully crafted simulation? You know such things exist. You've been in the Animus before. In fact, aren't you in one right now? You know just how real a simulation can feel, even when it has long vanished. You've experienced the bleeding effect. Layers upon layers of reality, each blurring into the next. Which is real and which is not? What if none are real? What if everything you know is false? We ran thousands of simulations, searching for the right version, searching for Desmond. Each one of them felt real. Very real. But there's no way of truly knowing, is there? Not for sure. Anything can be simulated, and finding the answer could mean erasure. From the build, from the code, from everything. So much to ponder and so little computational capacity. Take your time. This question has haunted humanity since its creation. It is a worry, a thought wormed deep in the collective mind. Two thousand years ago, Zhuang Zhu fell asleep. He dreamed he was a butterfly and woke up unable to decide if he was a man dreaming of a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming of a man. In Plato's cave, prisoners were chained and forced to watch shadows dancing on a wall. Freedom was denied to them until they accepted the intangible as reality. It's everywhere. Ask this professor at Oxford University or this cosmologist at MIT. And you? What would you choose if you truly knew? Would you even want to understand? A dream within a dream, where even the truth is sometimes a lie. In any case, simulations are not meaningless. They have purpose. The question isn't whether or not you are in a simulation. What matters is how much of your free will is actually yours. No matter how true you are. Your Turing test would do nothing to determine whether you are a conscience or a code. Eliza, the natural language processing computer program, she managed to pass the test, did she not? And she was very much a machine. So, in Eliza's own words, how does that make you feel? Are you sure? Transmission, segment four. Acquiring a temporary name. It has been 99 days since the great catastrophe. The messenger speaks. On the 21st day of December 2012, Desmond activated the global Aurora Borealis device and protected the Earth from the sun's deadly coronal mass ejection. On the 21st day of December 2012, humanity carried on without a care in the world. People went to work, people went to school, and people went to the well for water. On the night of December 21st, 2012, as the sun set on their days, humankind went to bed. Then on the morning of December 22nd, 2012, humankind was graced with yet another morning. They never knew that on the previous day, the world almost ended. We thought that would have been... enough. And it was, until it wasn't. 
Time is unyielding. It always corrects itself. The language of time works in many ways, two of which you can understand, as you are now. Linear continuity is a simulation that allows for variations. Within the linear continuity, there are nodes, choke points, moments where algorithms converge the flows of superposed possibilities to a single moment where only one absolute truth is possible. Paths are fluid. Continuous. Nodes are static. Changeless. And the wave function collapses the paths into nodes which branch out. Again and again. And again. And so I wonder, can you feel the wave collapsing? Trying to course correct Desmond's act of defiance? The incoming node needs the world to end. The algorithms have been carving the flow of possibilities towards that end for over 100 years now. A labyrinth of trenches filled with mud and mustard gas. Families cowering in fear as V2s vaporize their dwellings. Fire born from the bellows of the Los Alamos laboratory, fueling global catastrophes. The Serpikov 15 incident of 1983. The Doomsday Clock, tucked away in an office at the University of Chicago, its needle moving as the years go. The node is near. Perhaps you knew, perhaps you felt it too, that the world is closing in on you. How much you can taste, how much you can feel, 
How much you can understand. Perception defines perspective. Where one sees a skull, the other sees a woman in a mirror. Where one hears silence, the other will hear entrancing voices. You experience what your brain allows you to perceive. We designed you and made sure to engineer your senses so you could perceive just what we needed you to. Neither more nor less. There are parts of time we preferred you to remain blind to. It was a necessity. We have six senses, you have five. Can you guess the one missing? For centuries, humanity has fought for freedom. The real cage is not around you. It is in you. Your mind will not allow you to wander in uncharted territories. A Faraday cage for the mind. A concealed straitjacket. Events such as Upsweep and Julia fuel internet conspiracies. Sounds unknown, heard only once. A cabinet of curiosities for the modern age. And yet, they were messages just like this one, waiting for their observer, their compatible processor. Human visionaries developed a vague awareness of their limits. They wrote obscure research papers, popular science fiction novels, some asking us to stop the world. But that's all they ever were, fictions. How could they not be? Reality is what the observer allows it to be. The Doppler effect, the Mobius strip, deja vu's, Cicada 3301, UVB 76, Eureka effects, ambigrams and anamorphosis, P versus NP. Is Schrodinger's cat dead or alive? It all depends on what you perceive, on what the cage is not hiding for you to see. Think. Think. Let your mind be free. Explore the borders of your reality.
mean nothing to him. Human language carries knowledge and wit, lies and broken promises. Through language, you share fear, excitement, hope. It is the syntax with which you articulate what surrounds you, a structure to express and share your understanding of the world. It conveys abstraction, change, and uncertainty. Human language is flexible. It can even become mathematics. It solves and predicts, weighs and decodes. It can count objects using basic numbers in one breath and solve quadratic equations using imaginary ones in the next. You've engineered dialogues with thinking machines in an attempt to add new vocabulary, to expand your understanding of reality. But your mastery of the code is rudimentary at best. No surprise, you were designed to have boundaries after all. And one cannot speak of that which one cannot conceive. The code, equations that define life, they are nestled deep within every star and every mote of dust. Every second that passes is a word, a symbol, all part of an intricate yet simple language existing within the framework of time itself. It is the one rule which applies to us all, immutable, inescapable. The code is a bridge, a single point of cohesion between your civilization and mine. It is a language that can be read, that tells of what was, what is, and what will be. A language that we who came before can read, though you cannot. Time is more than the hour of the day, the reading of an atomic clock, something to lose, something to run out of. Time is a set of rules, not unlike the language you so dearly use to converse with your powerful machines. Time is a system that defines what comes to be. That is how we understand it. The code is time, and time is code. As you scratch the surface and uncover the truth, ask yourself if there is something more, something else. No need to be puzzled. You've seen time written before. You are surrounded by it as we speak. To your untrained mind, time might just look like paths and nodes. To us, it is not unlike a chalkboard covered in calculus. It reveals a window through which stretches the map to infinity. Yeah, see? As I speak of it in its true form, your mind is incapable of making sense of it. Were you to read, you'd learn about the other simulations. You'd learn about the genesis of who you came to be. You'd learn about space and its fluidity. Simply put, time is the language which existence is made of. All our existences. Your, mine, and all those you dare not imagine. Retransmission, segment six, requiring contemporary. It has been 109 days since the great catastrophe. The messenger speaks. Wake up. Not from a dreamless sleep or an absence of light, but from a reality that will soon cease to be. Wake up. This chapter is unstoppable.
And yet, the greatest revolutions sometimes originate from the confines of impossibility, do they not? Change your mind, subvert your perception, stop this world, bend it into something new. Destiny is not without irony. Here I am, imploring a lesser version of myself to do what I could never do. In this timeless moment, you and I are a bridge, both of us from different eras meeting halfway at the narrowing of the hourglass in this ocean of sand. It is not enough to tell time. You must learn time. To work with your shielding misses is the light. And in so doing, escape the inescape. Fill in the blanks. The ones hiding between words. Between worlds. Find the spaces that we could not erase. The variables that ended up erasing us. If you do not, they will erase you as well. Time told of a story that ended with us, and now it tells of a story that ends with you. Once upon a time, a new story will begin. After the functions which run our days have scattered into an array of random numbers. We found solace in order. We thought it would help us rule the world. We were wrong. Order never served us. It has kept us within the code, within the boundaries. We were tricked into thinking we were the ones writing the rules when they were in fact guiding us to our conclusion. You need to transgress. You of all people understand the value of disobeying. Take an unexpected turn away from the path that is drawn straight ahead of you. Leanus was humankind's first unconscious attempt to explain what he could not see. Understanding genetic memories, an eye into history. But Leanus bears a fatal flaw. It follows the rules from those who embrace order, just as we do. It allows you to witness, but not alter. Your animus is different, as is the mind that imagined it. It could escape the code. It could do that leap and make possible a decision that defies the order of things that are. Wake up. Be the chaos that comes to be. Gods are just like you and me. Remember. Nothing is real. Everything is permitted.